Welcome back everyone to another episode of Big Rants Isopods. This week we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite isopods, <laughs> even though they're all my favorite, is the Florida Fast. So before further ado, let's get into it. So as I said before, Florida Fast is the world's fastest isopod. Now these isopods might be a little bit harder to see for some people due to the fact that they are so small and so very fast. As you can see, they just zip right around. They're a really, really quick isopod. It's gonna be really hard for me to get any on the camera, but I'm gonna go through a couple of my cultures here. See if we can get some good shots as I talk about them here. Florida Fast, uh, unlike a lot of the other isopods, don't really need any supplement. I've tried in the past to give them some sort of either vegetable diet or some sort of flaky fish food diet, and it just doesn't seem to work out. It seems to be that these guys prefer to just eat upon the leaf litter and that's just pretty much the main portion of their diet. They seem to do really well when you have a lot of humidity in the container. You have a moist side, but I pretty much spray down the entire container heavily on the, the moisture side and I spray down the rest of the container as well and that seems to be doing probably the best for these guys. Obviously you don't want it to get uh, too moist or like have too much moisture or be too much moisture retentive because then you are going to get mold and that will cause your cultures to kind of de um, lose their their quantities their their yield or their output if that's the way you want to put it but other than that these guys are a really easy isopod to take care of they pretty much just do their own thing they just breed like crazy once you have the setup in the right conditions. You can kind of see there's one there. It's a good example of a couple. There's another one right there. But they're very small bland isopod, but they're really, really, really fast as you guys can see. They almost just disappear. It's hard to get them on camera. There's one moving slow for us there. It's a very almost creepy looking isopod because of how thin they are but I am assuming that helps them with their speed they're a really thin quick isopod they got no problem darting through the leaf litter or whatnot trying to get away from any predators I think that they would have in their area and their natural habitat of obviously Florida so that's probably the reason why they are the way they are so as I said before when I spray down the container I like to give it a heavy dose on one side and just go over the entire container with the rest of it. I always want to make sure that there's a lot of leaf litter in the container. I do have this in a relatively warm uh, spot in my, my isopod room. As I say in my other videos, my isopod room is always 75 degrees. So Fahrenheit or about 23 degrees Celsius. Uh, the temperature in my room is just goes by Fahrenheit, so that's what I go by. I am Canadian, so I usually use Celsius, but in my uh, bug room, it's just the house came with Fahrenheit, so that's what I use. I'm sure there's some way I could change it, but I prefer to just keep it the way it is right now. But as you can see, the isopods really enjoy the moisture retentive side. As I said before, they're really hard to see, but they're gonna do just fine in this container. Uh, they breed really quickly. So if you're going to get these guys, make sure you have multiple containers set up. I'll show you the amount that I have. This is probably one of my most prolific species. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, I think six containers of them. So I have quite a few of them. We'll take a look at another container and I'll just show you how prolific they really are. Hopefully this one's got quite a few isopods in it, should. They all seem to have different quantities, but some of them are doing better than others as you expect. But most of the time they're doing just fine. As long as you give them, like you can see, they're just going, I wish I had a 
better shot there for you guys but there's just they're really quick isopod really 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 fast it's probably just where the their environment is where they come from in florida they got to be quick to escape all the the different bugs and whatnot and uh reptiles and amphibians in in florida for them to keep on living a healthy life so that's just the way that they've uh kind of adapted to be make sure it's really moist on one side but since it's so warm and i keep them really close to the, the heat source then they should dry up within a week which is important otherwise mold will grow all right that's it for this week guys i know it's a really quick video but uh um, I kind of could have made this video in the past, but I chose not to for reasons where I had a lot of mold outbreaks when it comes to the Florida fast, since they like it so moist that it kind of, it's kind of hard to get that happy medium where it dries up within a week, but you still want to have the moisture retentiveness without the mold grow because you will lose, uh, some isopods if there is mold that grows in the container. So that's one thing you always want to watch out for whenever you're dealing with isopods that need a lot of moisture. I mean, everybody's household is going to be different. Some places in the world, you have a lot of moisture, so you don't have to spray that often. In other places, you don't have a lot of moisture. So you're always going to have to try to figure these things out on your own. There's no specific number that I could give you or anybody else who keeps isopods can give you to make sure that it's perfect. You kind of just got to play as you go. Then that's just how isopods are when you're keeping them. And I think that a lot of people that keep any sort of reptiles or spiders or amphibians or any sort of animals know that just because there's a certain way that you're supposed to do it doesn't mean that's always going to work for you. So for these guys, I would suggest to have a lot of moisture in them, uh, but not too much where it's going to mold out. You want to be able to, for them to live a happy life like they're supposed to so that they can breed well. You're going to want to have a lot of leaf litter, like I mentioned in one of my other videos about uh, the most important thing about keeping isopods. They're not going to need that much uh, soil, in my opinion. They are going to need soil for their monkai so that the monkai have something to eat on. But the adults are really going to be running around, running through the leaf litter and munching away at that. You don't need a lot of protein for these guys. Every once in a while, you might want to give them a little bit of protein or a little bit of vegetable. I do that once about every month to two months. I give them a little bit. But most of the time it just molds and the springtails end up eating away at it. So it's not really too important when it comes to these isopods. Another reason why it took me a while to get the this video up is because I wasn't too sure if I was doing it right. And I wanted to make sure that it was proper before I did this video. I don't like to do these care guides if I'm not 100% sure that this is the way that I found is best to keep these isopods. And just because I found it to be the best way doesn't mean that that is 100% the best way. It's just what works for me and what I hope works for you guys. So as a hobbyist isopod, one of the things that I like to do as a hobbyist when it comes to isopods is I like to have the world's best at anything. As you know, I've got the world's biggest isopods when it comes to either the, the Spanish species or the armadillidium species. I got my Jastroy right here, which is the largest of them. I got the fastest isopods. I mean, what else can I say? Anything that's the world's best at something and it's an isopod, I'm going to want to get it. Uh, except for the world's the most expensive isopod. That's not really something I'm going to be looking towards. Uh, just because some of the prices out there are extremely expensive. Anyway, that's it for this week, guys. Um, I hope that helps you out. I would definitely... Um, Make sure that if you're going to get these guys, you have somewhere where there's a lot of heat. I, I kind of already said that, but I just want to stress that as well, that they uh, do need a lot more kind of heat than other isopods. I'm not saying have them warmer, but I would have them, the way I keep it is the ones that are more near tropical, I keep closer to the roof where the heat kind of congregates, and the ones that are more live in the Americas or the northern regions, like uh, either Britain or... Germany or that type of stuff uh, I kind of get lower down like I got my Spanish species up here I got my Cubara species up here and that's that's kind of way I work it uh, the whole room is 75 degrees so it it just I just vary it by that it might get closer to maybe 80 up here but just because it's near the roof and then closer to maybe 60 near the ground but I don't I don't really measure that I just kind of go with the flow and see what the isopods like so that's it for this week please don't forget to like, 
comment, and subscribe, and we will see you guys all again next week. All right, bye.